Have you ever wondered what happens to your catalytic converters after you sell them? Do you know there's only six refiners participating in the marketplace? Well, today we're going to talk about the five segments of the catalytic converter recycling market and what happens to these converters. From sale, through processing, and back into manufacturing. Today, I'm joined with Rich Pelletier. Hi, Rich. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Well, let's dive into it. Let's start with the first segment, sellers, right? I'm, I'm an automotive shop. I have converters. I sell my converters. So where do my converters go? Oh, okay, so you could be a shop. You could be a, a, an auto recycler. You could be a scrap metal recycler who ends up in the normal course of business with uh, scrap catalytic converters, right? So what happens to those converters? Well, generally you're going to sell them to a collector, right? So the first tier of this marketplace is going to be the seller level who generates these converters. So you're going to end up sending to a collector or a collector's going to come in, a road buyer, street buyer, whoever comes in, or maybe you have a relationship with, with, a, with a collector and you send them to a collector in bulk, however that is. But uh, normally uh, you're selling them by the piece or perhaps you've got a volume. I don't know. You know, uh, just depends on the individual depends business. On, depends on the how operation. How much volume they're doing. Yeah, uh, scrap metal recyclers and uh, auto dismantlers typically generate a volume, and uh, repair shops not so much. Right? Yeah. So let's get into the third segment: processors. What are the processors doing? Well, you know, it's f interesting that you say a third segment because sometimes the collectors are also working as a processor. So other times they're selling to a processor. Well, a processor is the company that's going to remove the monolith from the inside of the can and uh, prepare it for uh, in bulk transport to, uh, to a smelter. So the processors... You know, if you look at the seller market, there could be 150,000 companies in the United States that are sellers. Right. Low volume sellers, mostly. But the collector market, we could be looking at under 1,000 companies in the United States that are actual collectors. And then when it gets to a processor, maybe there's uh, 50 companies in the United States that are actually decanting the, con the catalytic converter, um, separating the monolith, and that gets sent off to a smelter at that point. Hey guys, have you ever wondered if you're leaving money on the table when selling your scrap catalytic converters? Well, we have a solution for you. We have a converter price guide with thousands of part numbers. Just use it. Check it out. You can sign up today. Have access for it today. See if you are leaving any money on the table or keep the guy honest that you're selling to. You want to check it out. Make sure you're making the most profits for your business in today's market. It's super simple. Just click the link below. Get started today. Explain when the material that's decanned, it arrives at a smelter. What is the process once they receive the material? Well, generally it's shipped in bulk, you know, uh, super sack maybe even 55-gallon drums, several drums. And uh, a smelter takes that material and, and uh, you know, weighs it, gross tear net, captures the weights, takes the material, goes through a process to uh, screen and remove any metallics before it goes to a high-speed hammer mill, uh, producing powder. And so downstream from the, the hammer mill, you're, you've got these stream samplers that'll take a three, five, seven percent cut off the stream. And uh, that's the sample for analysis that goes to the lab. The bulk is saved up. And you, they'll pull three samples out of that one for the, for the laboratory, one a reserve, and one for the client. Um, it's reported so many parts per million, calculated a percentage, and applied to the end weights. So it's a simple math equation at that point, uh, determining how much precious metal is contained in the lot. In the whole lot. In the whole lot. 
What do those labs look like? Well, labs can be quite sophisticated and large with uh, XRF and, and you know, inductively coupled plasma, ICP, uh, wet chemistry analysis. There could be dozens of people working in a laboratory. It just depends on the size of the facility. Uh, smaller facilities, uh, just a few people. takes longer to get it through that lab Process. than it does for a, a company with a lot of chemists walking around and doing their doing their thing in there, right? right? And so, uh, but that that's just the laboratory piece of it uh, for the smelter. And what's typically and, the turnaround? And so, on so that? if we're talking about smelters, you know, in North America, there's probably only maybe six. In North America, yeah, right. So uh, as you can see, this thing's concentrating up from, you know, thousands to hundreds to six smelters in the pyramid, right? And uh, the bulk of the material, after it's been ground and sampled and analyzed, that goes into the furnace, and they they mix that with a flux, and sometimes they'll they'll uh, um, have to add a collector metal or copper, nickel, iron, whatever the collector metal is for that operation. And they'll smelt it into ingot. And inside the furnace, the, the precious metals, they'll congeal in the flux and they'll come to the bottom. The precious metals? Along with the base metals. And they'll collect in a pool at the bottom. And the very top is a slag fraction. But then you've got all of this really hot, liquidy, flux, they'll tap that, remove the slag, and when they get down to the bottom, they'll tap the bottom and divert that and collect up the metal. And they'll take samples out of the metal for process control. They'll analyze that as it goes through the system as well. So that's what they're doing with that. And at that point, they've gone from a concentration of, oh, so many thousand or hundreds of parts per million to actual percentage, maybe 2%, 3% precious metal in the base metal ingot that they produce. And from there, that has to go to the refinery. Now, we have the refinery on the chart as a single step, but the refinery is basically a base metal refinery. Right. So it has to go to the base metal refinery. Well, explain to the viewers, put your metallurgist cap on. Okay. I know you've been doing this for a long time, but kind of explain that if you can to the viewers to where they would understand. What, what does that mean, what you're saying there? Okay, so the base metal is the copper nickel iron fraction, which is major, the majority of the metal, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've said this in the past. In the refining business, you look at it as, are we treating the majors or are we treating... The miners, okay? Well, in this case, the base metal refinery is treating the major elements, which will be the copper nickel iron, and they'll be extracting the copper nickel iron out of it in the base metal refinery, and they'll produce a sludge of precious metal at the end of their process. And that has been enriched from the 1, 2, 3% to 20, 25, 30% Precious metal at that point in so the that's, sludge. That's a big upgrade. It's a big upgrade, right? So they're producing copper and they're producing nickel metal in the base metal refinery. That's their job, right? So then they send that over to the precious metal refinery. And those muds that are 20, 25, 30% total platinum group metals, platinum, palladium, rhodium, they're all dissolved in acids. And they're individually chemically precipitated or separated out of solution one by one down the stream to collect up the pure platinum, the pure palladium, the pure rhodium. And they will not actually necessarily produce ingot, melted into ingot, or fabricate it or rot form. They'll leave it in, in a finely divided black mud stage, stage as pure palladium, pure rhodium, mm -hmm. right? Pure platinum. And that gets sold off to a manufacturer for reuse in, in, the, uh, 
manufacturing process for catalytic converters. How but many? now there's there's maybe six of those worldwide. Hey, are you struggling with the catalytic converter recycling market? You need to make more money, don't you? That's right. Whether you're selling in the can, in bulk, or you want to get into decanning and selling by assay, today we're offering 15-minute discovery calls. Click the link below. Give us the opportunity to talk to you about what your specific needs are. Noble Six has been doing this for over 15 years, helping companies just like yourself get to the top of the market. That's what I was going to ask you next was how many refiners are there? Maybe six worldwide that are equipped to handle PGM, platinum group metals. Not many then. Huh? And, and, and separate them into their individual elemental form for reuse, at, you know, in high purity form for reuse into industry. There's maybe only six worldwide. So, so you can see how it works its way up the chart, up mm -hmm. the stream, so to speak. Right. Right. And if you look at it, in the United States, anyway, in the manufacture of new catalytic converters, at least 70% of the precious metal that goes into the manufacture of new catalytic converters comes from recycling old catalytic converters. So it shows you how really important the recycling uh, industry is here in the United States to feed the manufacturing. That's a big number, 70%. Because we don't mine much of it here in the United States. We have... Right. We have a couple of mines, uh, we've got, you know, the Stillwater mine, we've got some mining going on up in Canada, and they produce primarily palladium and not so much of the platinum or the rhodium. It, most of that comes from South Africa, from the primary mines. We're, you know, we're looking at, oh, what, maybe 80% of the platinum group metals come out of South African mines and, and primary mines, and mm -hmm. then the, maybe the remainder, you know, 18% come from Russia and maybe a few percent from North America. So it shows you how critical it is to recycle these components here in the United States and keep those elements in our manufacturing stream. Yeah, definitely. Closed loop, circular economy. Closed loop. That's a big benefit. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention, you know, carbon footprint. We hear a lot about yeah, that, right? Yeah, well, you do hear about a lot. Today, it's um, considered to be as much as 90% less carbon uh, produced through recycling of the precious metals contained in catalytic converters versus what's, what, what the uh, carbon footprint is of a primary mine. Big difference. Oh, huge, huge savings in carbon. Right. Think of any other benefits? Well, the I yeah, there's there's besides the environmental benefit, right? We have a pretty mature industry here in the United States. And there's opportunity in this industry for companies uh who could either uh generate the converters or collect the converters or process the converters. So it does generate quite a bit of cash flow for companies here in the United States, and that means jobs. That's always a good thing. And that's all, all within the borders of the United States. So all of that's good stuff. So we like that. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully this video gives you a lot of insight. The catalytic converter recycling business is an integral business. You know, I didn't know when I first got in the business how few smelters – and even less the refiners out there globally that are actually finishing out the PGM process in catalytic converter recycling. So just to recap, there was five segments. The first segment is the sellers. There's about 125,000 shops out there. Second is the collector. There's about 2,500 collectors. Number three was the processors. There's about 50 companies. Number four was the smelters. There's about six companies smelting currently. And number five is the refiners. And there's six companies globally refining the PGMs. So whether you're just new in the catalytic converter business, you know, there's probably a lot of information that you didn't even think about or didn't know what happens to the catalytic converters once you leave your shop. So we're here to help. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share the video.